Hey guys, Sean from Lost Tide. I'm here today to show you how to make the best shark leader I know how. This is a super heavy duty shark leader for land-based shark fishing when you're paddling out your baits and dropping them 100 to 500 yards from the beach. This is the kind of setup you want to use when you're fishing for large sharks off of the beach. Here's a finished one right here. You've got your mono leader and it's connected by a swivel to your steel cable. And then I like to use a double hook rig. That way you can hook the front and the back of the fish. That way if you get a short strike, you'll still hook them. You will hook some smaller sharks like that, but that's the price you pay for trying to get more hookups. So let's get started. Here's all the materials you're gonna need. I've got thousand pound mono leader material. I got that off bullbuster.com. Got some AFW 49 strand seven by seven stainless steel wire. Some people like to use single strand wire. Uh, they both have certain advantages over the other. I just prefer the seven by seven for a nine strand wire because you don't get nearly as many kinks as you do with the single strand wire. You're gonna need a large crimping tool. You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. You're gonna need, you're gonna need wire cutters, preferably heavier duty ones to cut through that steel cable. You're going to need crimps, these are called crimp sleeves. You're gonna need crimp sleeves for the thousand pound mono. You're gonna need heavy duty barrel swivels. You need electrical tape. You need a tape measure. Most important, you're gonna need some good stout hooks. Okay, let's get started with the mono. You're gonna need wire cutters to cut the end of this. And the length you want, I like to use five to six feet of the heavy mono leader and you can use a tape measure which is good but I know that my reach from fingertip to fingertip is about five six so what I do is I just take it stretch it out once come back to where that hand is stretch it out again then I know I got about 11 feet of mono right there okay so Got our piece of mono cut. Let's cut our steel cable. And I use just about the same length in the steel cable. About five to six feet. And I do it the exact same way. Stretch it. Come back. Stretch it all the way out, okay? Right there, I know that I got between five to six feet. Now we got our wire cut. So we got about five and a half feet of stainless steel cable and five and a half feet of the thousand pound mono. First thing you're gonna do is take one of your crimp sleeves. You get these off of Bull Buster 2 for the thousand pound mono. You're gonna slide your crimp sleeve on like that. You're gonna push it down. I always use my index finger and thumb. I go down about that far. Then you're gonna to wanna to put your swivel on, okay? You're gonna bend it over and you're gonna slide both of those lines through the crimp sleeve like that. I push it up to where it's firm and snug then you grab your crimps. And when you get them, you just kind of experiment, to see which one is the right one slot to use for the thousand pound. And you get it started like that. And let me show you here. I'm leaving, you want to leave a little bit 
of space right there because you want you want your crimp to do what's called flare. I'll show you here in a second. You get in there, you squeeze. You're gonna do one on that end of the crimp. Let's see, we got one crimp done right there. And then we're gonna to wanna to put another one right there. So we're gonna squeeze that through. Again, we're leaving some space on the end there. Okay, squeeze. All right. Now, can you see the flaring right there? That's what you want. You want that crimp sleeve at the ends to be flared out. Kind of like an hourglass shape. You see how that's hourglass shape right there. That's how you know you got a good hold there. Okay? All right, uh, let me do that to the other end and then we'll get onto the wire. Now we got both ends with a barrel swivel and a crimp sleeve that's crimped twice. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wire. Okay, this is the most complex process out of the whole thing. You've got seven strands of wire here. You have to separate it into strands of three and four. So you've got one section of four right here. One section of three right here. So you're gonna unwind it into two sections. You're gonna go down from your index finger to the end of your thumb, which is about eight inches, like that. You've got your two sections here. You're gonna take your barrel swivel slide one section through and let it drop down. Now you're going to cross these over just like that. Okay? You're going to run the wire through. There's two ways that wire can go through. You see how it's not locking on each other right there? That means I've got it backwards. So I've got to take that out. You look and see how you had them crossed and you do it the exact opposite. So now I'm gonna bring that wire through from the other side. You're gonna notice a big difference here. You see how those strands have gone together right there? They're smooth. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna run it through again. And it's gonna lock right back in smooth again. Now you got your barrel swivel down here. So you're gonna run that line through the barrel swivel and bring it up where it's on the part that's wrapped already. So you're gonna run it through one more. Still gap there, so you can run it through one more. And there's still another gap, so one more time. Okay, now, you see how that just looks like the regular steel cable right there now. You're gonna drop that barrel swivel down, and you're gonna do the same thing on this side. You can pull it through and wrap. Pull it through and wrap until you come all the way down to the end. Okay? It may take a few times to get the hang of it, but once you figure out how it works, you'll you'll get it and it won't be ever be a problem again. So you got your two tag ends here now loose. So what you gotta do is you gotta take these two, combine them, make it into Another piece of regular steel cable, just like that. So you figure out which way they're wrapped, and then you start going, wrap it, making tight wraps with them. Okay, you see how that's turning in? To one steel cable there. I'm gonna go all the way down, like that. Okay, now, you got it. Okay, we're gonna go through, we're gonna do that with the hooks, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna take these. Okay, we've got 18 knot circle hooks. They're straight shank. 
They're not offset. The new regulations coming out say you have to use non-offset, non-stainless steel hooks. And these aren't stainless steel either. And those are the new Florida Shark regulations coming out. So you're gonna take your wire, you're gonna thread this one on. You want to go through this way, and you're just gonna leave that for now. Now, you're gonna take your other hook, and you're gonna do this one just like we did the joint there. You're gonna put it through one side, you're gonna make your loop, Let's go this way. I think that's the correct way. And you're going to bring one through the loop and see if it locks in. Okay, locked in. We want to get that smooth. Okay, we got it like that. So you know you've got it correct. So you're going to pull that through. See how smooth that is right there. And we want to get our hook back over this part that's got the double, two sides joined together. So we're gonna stick this through the eye of the hook, just like that, slide the hook back. So now the hook's out of the way, so we can finish wrapping this, okay? Got enough space for one more. Okay, that side's wrapped. Drop the hook over to this side, through, again. One, one more. Out, we got enough gap for one more wrap. So we're gonna go through one more time. Bring it down. Okay. So this is gonna be the exact same way we did the other side. We're going to get these wrapped together. All right. Got it started right there. See how I got it started? So we're gonna wrap that all the way down. Make sure that's smooth all the way through. You can see. Got that. So now, you can take this hook, you can run it through the gill plate, pull it back to the back of the shark, tuck that into the back, making sure it's exposed out. And you can take this one, you can hook it in the jaw right here. So you got your shark hooked at both ends. Let's finish this out. Let's get these ends taped up. That's what we've got the electrical tape for. So you don't want these tag ends flying around. Uh, they'll pick up debris. Um, you can just make a mess if there's June grass out and you're trying to reel up. Something like that would pick up, pick up a crazy amount of June grass. So. Just gonna take your electrical tape. Start there. You're just gonna wrap it tight. Pulling it tight as you wrap. You wanna go all the way over the tag end. Wrap a couple times. You're good. This wrapped back on itself. Okay, that's it. You got your shark leader done and finished. Now I'll show you how I like to store it. It's baggy. All right, the size of hooks they are on the outside of the baggie. Just take your leader, start rolling it up tight. Wire, just do the same thing. Do, open your baggie up. Slide it in. It kind of unravel before it fills the baggie. There you go. You're all set. Easy to do. It's not hard. Uh, 
A buddy of mine showed me how to make these. He's an avid shark fisherman. He's reeled in multiple makos on rigs like this. So these work. You got your mono leader to protect against a tail whip. And you've got an excess of wire there just in case the shark rolls around, wraps up in the leader and gets another part of it in his mouth. 10 to 11 feet of that should be enough that even if he does roll around, get wrapped up and gets it back in his mouth, he's still gonna have the wire leader in there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support. Tight lines, everybody, and see you next week.